Welcome everyone to our special event with our special guest and it is our friend Sonia Rinaldi. I remember it was 2005 when I first heard of Sonia and the experiments this lady was doing in Brazil and how she was connecting parents with their children through a telephone of sorts and I knew someday I wanted to well, I never thought I'd meet her, but I thought I would study, find out what it is. And back in, oh, 2017, 2018, I met Sonia and I just fell in love with her as a person and not just voices, but she started collecting images, beautiful images of people in the afterlife. She has been to, with me on my live conferences my father has come through in her trance images like no picture that was ever taken of him alive so i know he lives on she works every day every day <laughs> in this science in this research she knows how devastating it is to have a loved one pass so many unfortunately pass in so many different ways including suicide there is nothing more tough than grief and through those of us who have been following Sonia's work whether our loved ones come through or not we see the real reality of the afterlife that our loved ones are alive they're well they show themselves healthy and whole and I love Sonia and just so you know Sonia is going to donate one person that is with us a session with her now you cannot book Sonia on a session. So Sonia works in her science. She does not do readings, but one person who has signed up for today, I have a, this jar filled with everyone's names. And at the end, I will pull a name. You don't need to be present to win. I will contact you and we will sort that out. But Sonia is very special to me. We will be together about two hours. We'll have some time at the end for questions or answers. <laughs> And before you talk to Sonia, I just would like Lisa, if you would do a proper welcome to Sonia and our, our guests, because I know Sonia means so much to you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> if you have sat with us before and you think you've seen everything that Sonia can bring through, you haven't even touched the surface. Oh what? God. Every time, months, a month or two goes by and something new comes through. And it's it's because of her dedication, but it's what they're doing from the other side. And the phenomena that they're bringing through is amazing. And if you think that you've sat with Sandra or you've sat with us and you've seen amazing things, just sit back today because minds are going to be blown. Minds are going to be blown today. I'm not going to waste any time. Sonia, show us what you got. Okay. So um, thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Lisa. And uh, I'll share my my screen so that we can start. Uh, are you seeing my 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 screen? Yes. Okay. So, okay, so we will talk today about an overview and the dis new discoveries in instrumental transcommunication. Let's start talking about the difference between mediumship and ITC communication. Many persons think that it is all the same. No, it is not. Um, medians are local interference over uh, from the spirit is directly over the median, something that we could call mind to mind contact. Um, all sort of medianships uh, implies in uh, uh, approximation and uh, interference is straight to the the the, man, the, the mind or uh, to the abilities that the the median has. 
So it is something that it, is, it happens here in a, in a parallel space to ours. At the beginning of uh, the experiments of instrumental transcommunication, as, as the pioneers like Jurgensen or my main communicator, is, that is uh, Dr. Konstantin Rauder, uh, they had the same type of uh, contacts uh, similar to mediums, that is from their minds directly into to the device. Um, it was something not mind to mind, but mind to device. So the spirit is would something like whisper over the device, and so they would create noisy or uh, dirty voices, uh, something that, let's say, was not as good as today, but it, it was a, a local interference over the device. So we could call these a mind interference to tape recorder. That time it was just tape recorder. That is the initial uh, ITC, instrumental transcommunication contacts were physical. They, they also happened here, let's say, in a close um, influence to the, the experimentator. And this was uh, since more or less um, 1950 till the year 2000, when things started changing. So let's make a, a summary. So afterlife communication was and it still is uh, related to mediums, a mind-to-mind -mind interference. For a period of nearly 50 years, they tried mind to device. It was the, the initiation of instrumental transcommunication. And now in the late 10 years, let's say, the other side, the spirit friends, uh, succeeded in having enough interest from Earth because their evolution, their uh, what they do depends on the interest happening on Earth. So now they have enough interest so that to, to develop new devices to, to start a new phases uh, in the history of instrumental transcommunication. So device to device is the, the latest thing and uh, this is to assure the contact will be completely poor and uh, direct, straight to the device without the interference of any mind or of any person or of anything. So by now we can ask, where are these communicators located? Or where are they sending these images from? Or how can they send data packs to our devices? Or how they can work remotely, right? Because that is what I said, that they are working device to device. That is the big shift. The day that they uh, uh, make it perfect, obviously it is ongoing. Um, it is not uh, definitive yet. The, the, the batteries and uh, uh, all the results are not still, let's say, perfect, but it will be in future. Um, but that will be a big shift. That will be machine to machine or device to device uh, communication straight from the other side to ours on Earth. Maybe these news, let's say, in the last uh, six, eight years, uh, uh, has the, the motive of the transition times, which is said that uh, a new phase is a new era will happen to Earth in some years when things will be, um, uh, the connection with the other side will be every day. It will be something absolutely common because it will be proved in the afterlife, what we don't have yet, right? So we have lots of phenomena, but we don't have uh, the scientific evidences uh, because it has a, a right time that is just for that. And uh, I, I think that maybe these days uh, coming and uh, it will be proved um, uh, uh, as they, they plan, let's say. 
So may see the mothers has this type of a question. How may data, either audios or images, arrive on Earth? Any mom could think that, uh, oh, my son gets a microphone and, and speak to me. No, it is not like that. And that's what I'm going to, to show you. It is something extremely complex. And um, uh, I, I made a video myself uh, to, work, to, to show you the ex exchange between astral cities and our Earth. So um, I made it myself. So it is just... Uh, for you to have an idea. So this is Earth. And this is us living in the surface of Earth. So all of us are experiencing a life, a terrestrial experience on the surface of Earth. And when we pass, we go to a parallel space that we'll talk about, and uh, these uh, spirit friends of all levels, obvious, obviously very nice and wonderful uh, spirits, but also those bad ones, uh, all they are, uh, they can live near Earth. Obviously, all depends on the synchronity that he, the persons will make, so there is absolutely no reason for any fear, okay? So this is our parallel humanity. We could say that we have two humanities, one incarnated and one that lives uh, in parallel, uh, disincarnated. Then we have surrounding Earth, many, many astral cities, which will receive those that passes in accordance to the level, to the interests, to the affinity with that city, okay? Now, what happens uh, is that mankind created a belt of signals, um, as Dr. Howdy said, and uh, this um, belt of signals is, um, something like GPS signal, signals, internet, satellites, drones, sensors, spy devices. So in a certain uh, high height of Earth, uh, there are lots of lots of equipment, terrestrial equipment, including space uh, debris. So uh, this became a problem for our friends that are in the level of making a device to device communication because they are located after this belt. So all of a sudden, this became a problem. Uh, I think that uh, uh, who was, who was uh, in a materialization meeting, some in uh, 1918, uh, saw the explanation that Dr. Howdiv gave regarding this. So, they say they are speaking from Alpha, that is the name of their city, but Alpha uh, is located after the, the belt. So uh, they had to create a way of reaching us without crossing that belt. And that was something obviously very com complicated, right? So in this city called the Alpha, uh, they are engineers, inventors, genius that live on Earth, they don't have to be uh, here close to Earth anymore because they are uh, very evoluted. So they, they join other uh, scientists that work the, uh, and uh, still wanted to work for, for mankind, right? So they are there and they had this challenge of how to reach us. Okay, sorry. Okay, so um, then we come to the transmission station. I remember that whenever I talked about the transmission station, uh, people, uh, my American friends were surprised, thinking, oh my God, but how can exist a transmission station? Is it concrete? Is it solid? Yes, the reality in the other side is concrete, is solid. It is not solid. 
for us, but it is in their plane. And um, lots of description of uh, how they live and what they do and how they do are in the spiritist books written by the medium, Brazilian medium Chico Xavier, for instance, or even uh, by the, the, the person who created the doctrine that was Alan Kardec and many other um, uh, mediums that talks about the life in the other side. Okay, so there are lots of cities uh, for receiving, uh, let's say, um, uh, prisoners, uh, murderers, they will not join the, the other people. They will uh, join as per affinity. Okay, so um, I say that they uh, they join as per the level of the inhabitants. Uh, the most far from Earth, the higher is the level, because let's say Earth is absolutely dense. Uh, it is uh, something that. Uh, Whenever they can, they avoid to, to come those high entities because it is dense. It is um, uh, it is not what they, 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 they live over there. But so uh, what I was saying, how would they reach us? Uh, as Dr. Howdy said, there is a belt of signals blocking um, Earth in relation to Alpha City. So uh he said that uh, it would it became a problem for them to because they couldn't cross it right or or possibly uh, they could also uh, reach it, interfere in those equipments what could be a disaster also for earth anyway right so who could could bring the solution for such a huge problem, if not Tesla. Tesla, when he was alive, I think he was the, the greatest genius that mankind heard. Um, when he was alive, besides the many inventions that he made, he also had some uh, weird ideas such as that he could he could speak it to extraterrestrials that he could contact mars and uh, uh, he tried to contact the diseased ones so it was for the for the time it is something like 100 years ago it was absolutely shocking but now that he's in the other side and coordinating the stations it is more than obvious that he would find a solution for this huge problem. So, um, one solution was to use wormholes to contact Earth straight without crossing that belt. What is a wormhole? It is often depicted as a tunnel connecting two separated, separated regions of space, allowing objects or information to pass through in a simultaneous connection. The concept of a wormhole arises from the theory of general relativity, relativity proposed by Albert Einstein. So uh, Einstein left this possibility. Up to today, mankind didn't prove yet that wormholes do exist, though, though our friends are already using otherwise they wouldn't be able to produce what they do so i said that itc is a remote interference right and this sounds very complicated because we in, in informatics they have to deal with back of binary digital data uh, that has to be transferred it to inside our devices. So what we see as an image possibly doesn't leave their space as an image as we see. It is a pack of data, right? And this has to travel and arrive in our PC with that thing that the no way that we can recognize. And they have to be precise because if they make a mistake of time of one millimeter, they may reach uh, uh, the street above or my neighbor, anything but not me. So it has to, to be absolutely precise, this type of connection. 
So uh, Tesla thought that instead of making a transmission, and this is important because people still think that ITC is a transmission, but it is not. It is an interference. What is something different? How they are working now in, this, in the late six, eight years? They copy our reality to their space and they work there. They don't have to leave Alpha. They can work that is straight in Alpha and they, they will interfere through wormholes in our reality. That is something like virtual reality. It is something extremely advanced, obviously, that we don't have here on Earth yet. So the transmission station and orator. This is another story. Some um, 10 years ago, more or less, once in a recording, a voice said, orator will speak. And then I started thinking, who is orator? Is, is the boss? Is a person? Is it a decision one? Is what? It took me some years to perceive that orator is uh, a machine, is uh, something like uh, uh, some uh, like Google, perhaps some just to compare, which makes the in interface between the loved ones and our devices. So the the connection is made by a machine that they call orator. So obviously this is just a, a composition I made um, from uh, designers in, from internet. So it is just how, how, I, how I imagine that uh, orator can be. So the scientists will work to, to make this machine to reach us without crossing those uh, belts of uh, uh, the devices that are flying around the earth. So I think that orator has to be a machine or a biocomputer or a quantic computer, anything that you have no idea, acting as an interface between their space and ours. There are many evidences that I, that I have been raising from the results, from the recordings, to, to, to note that that cannot be done by a human mind. Um, as for instance, the adjust, adjustment of time cannot be da done. Uh, so many calculus, so many math uh, for reaching us with precision and it transfer a data pack to our computer. So definitively, uh, I think that operator is um, a device, a huge device that may speak many languages, for instance. Now, coming to Earth back, how I work. So how I will try, try to join the other side and what happens here. So I usually ask, usually it is Lisa who asks the mothers uh, or who else uh, to send me one thought. It is important to have one because uh, the phenomenon consists in changing this photo and bringing that person in different ages. So if I had many photos, it, it wouldn't be working, right? So it is just one photo and uh, the closest closest possible to the time that the deceased one passed. So let's say uh, that the vapor that I use, which is an ordinary humidifier uh, serves as a screen for the spirits to work. Remember that they will have this that we are seeing here. They will have this carpet. So they will work over the vapor in there and it will be changing in mind. So whatever I record, I'll be recording with a simple cell phone, which is a extremely simple technology. And uh, uh, that's all. Uh, so it is very clear that 99% is done in the other side because it is just a cell phone, an ordinary one. So uh, what will happen is called the transfigurations or apparitions, depending on the, the case, so that they will manage in their space the vapor that they are having in copy and will link simultaneously 
to the devices so that I can register what they are doing. Now, it is uh, something a bit, uh, a bit long, but I, I felt I had to show all the cases of this year, because as Sandra said, we met in December last year. So uh, during this month, we uh, progressed a lot. And I want you to notice that uh, uh, all these uh, results have something in common, which is the sh uh, they show, the other side shows, uh, the the past of the the deceased ones, as we will see here. Okay, so I'm sorry it is lots of case, but uh, it is also for you to see that we work a lot. That's important for me, and uh, we accomplished the three projects. One was the the, the pat first pat patrons project because I wanted to retribute to those uh, patrons that were with me for three years, um, four years. And one of them was Patricia from Vermont, and uh, she lost her daughter, Melissa. And now we'll have a, a, a lot of cases, and you'll see that all of them have something in common, which is the, the apparition of the past. So Marisa, Melissa, that was the photo that I had for the experiment, and she appeared this way. But when I uh, sent it to Patricia, she sent me a photo of Melissa, of her past, and voila, that is just the same face. Obviously, and I'll try not to repeat this, I have never seen this image at right, and so didn't Patricia. Now, uh, in the sequence, we had uh, Gabriella's case. That was a request, in by, a request, request by her uh, grandson, David. She passed at the age of, uh, of 44, 94, sorry. And uh, in her place appeared many, many children that uh, it, they were all announced to us. Here is another one. We don't know who they are, but it, it was all, all that appeared. And we also don't know why Gabriella brought all these children. Then we uh, recorded it for Adele, um, Adele's husband, Neo, uh, he passed at the age of uh, 60, 56 in London. And uh, this is how he appeared. Notice that he appeared younger as the photo that uh, Adele sent it to me later. Here we have uh, Jonathan's uh, father. He passed at the age of 81, Barry. And uh, by the way, Jonathan is also an experimentator. And look at this case. It is wonderful. Uh, Barry, uh, that was the, uh, that left the photo that I had that Jonathan sent. So this is, what, as you see, with glasses, white hair, and then appeared this, this photo in the middle. And then I thought, for God's sake, is that the same person? And then I sent it to Jonathan. And then Jonathan sent this uh, image of his father when he was much younger, and you see it is just the same traces. Then we have Keegan. Keegan uh, passed at, uh, in California at the age of 29, and what was a request of Sherry. And look at this. He appeared like this, and then I sent it to Sherry, and then sent Sher Sherry sent this photo of Keegan. Look at its similarity, much younger and perfectly similar. In the same recording, Keegan is still appeared a little bit older. And then this is another photo that mom supplied. And you see, well, it is the same guy, right? And obviously neither Sherry nor me had such an image or such photo. This is still Keegan because I think it is a special case uh, here outside Sherry. And look at the trans image, how similar is from this trans image, uh, considering that the, the original photo that I received was absolutely different. And at the end, he still appeared older than he was when he passed. At the left here, you have um, Keegan uh, uh, in the photo, 
And then outside you have the trans image showing him older as possibly he would be, he would look today. Then we have Ali's case. Uh, Ali uh, is Alexander's uh, grandson of Lydia, who is a wonderful uh, uh, volunteer that helps me with the Spanish. And uh, Ali appeared already many times, but look at this. He appeared as a little boy, and then I sent it to Lydia. And then, wow, she sent me this photo of Ali. And it is just the same little boy. And also in the same recording, Ali still appeared as a teenager. And that is the photo that uh, grandma sent for me to compare. Observe that he is not using uh, any glasses anymore. And also uh, still for Lydia, also th there happened uh, the apparition of her, uh, her brother, Afonso. Look that she sent me this photo at left, and in the middle you see as he appeared. And then I was very surprised because the, uh, he looked completely different. And then she, when after I sent it to Lydia, she sent me this photo aside here, uh, much appearing him much younger. And the most surprising was that he appeared with long hair. And then I sent it to Lydia and I asked it, did your brother ever use the long hair? And then she sent me this, this photo for comparison. Chris Case, a mom, Kathy. Uh, Chris Christopher uh, passed at the age of 22. And uh, here he, he is how, how he appeared as a little boy. And then Kathy sent this photo for comparing. Remember that the mother is uh, 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 always sending after the recording is done. Here, Christopher is smiling. And I think this is incredible because here he appears as a teenager. Notice that the, the loved one is growing up in front of the camera over the other side. Okay, so here is a photo that Kathy sent later. Look, beautiful Christopher. He passed at the age of 22, but here I would say he would be 15, perhaps, uh, as a teen teenager. Then we recorded it for Katharina. Uh, she's Zach's mother. He passed at the age of 38. And look at the quality of this image. It is nearly 3D. And this is how Zachary appeared. This is other moment of his recording. You have the impression that you can touch it. And this, I think, is beautiful. And this is the photo that uh, 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 Katarina, uh, Catherine sent later. Note that the photo, in the photo, he's uh, showing his teeth. And uh, in the trans image, he is not. And the hair, yes, is similar, which is different of the orig original photo that I had. Then we had Claudia's case, uh, requested by her sister Beth. She passed in Louisiana at the age of 62. And this is how she appeared, smiley, happy. And also, this is wonderful. She appeared much younger, and then the sister sent this image of Claudia when she was much younger, and notes that it resembles the trans image. Then we have the case of the person who was who won the the raffle that is Sandra uh, picked up uh, in December. That is uh, that was Amy, the the person that won. The, the the raffle and uh, she lost her brother at the age of 31 he um, passed by his own hands and look at this case brian appeared as a little boy this is the photo that amy and the mother robin supplied compare the trans image in the middle with the photo that i had in my hands that was at this one at the left 
also here again, Brian. So today we will have someone uh, also that will uh, participate of my, my recording. Look at this. This is Brian, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, as a teenager, not as an adult yet. And they sent this uh, beautiful image comparing, and it is just him. And this is absolutely surprising. Brian uh, brought someone else with him. Uh, you see that the, the person here at the right is Brian, as we, uh, even that he is younger, but he's still Brian. And he brought uh, a little girl. And then I sent it to Amy and Robin. And I said, do you know who this girl is? And they thought, thought, thought. And then it is Amy. But she is alive. She won the raffle. So it it means that uh, this image of Amy is still uh, in Brian's consciousness, right? Uh, so it is just her. I think it is easy to perceive. Look at this. Just the same ex expression, and uh, we had no idea who was the the, the girl. Now we finished one project and uh, started another, which is of the suicide uh, girls. So uh, all these girls passed by their own hands. The first case is uh, Alice, Ellie, and uh, she is daughter of Alex. She passed in UK at the age of 27. Look at this. She appeared as a little girl and then mom sent this photo for comparison. This is, uh, I think, uh, very, very amazing because uh, the hair is similar. This is still Ellie. And then uh, as a teenager, notice that she is growing up in front of the camera of the other side. And here is still her that is the photo that mom had more close to the trans image. Then we have Cassie, Cassie's case. She also passed by her own hands. She is the daughter of Roseanne, a very sweet person, by the way. And uh, so Cassie appeared like this. Notice that they have a, a, a special happiness expression. And also, uh, Cassie was uh, from Asia. Oh, notice that uh, she brought the same traces she had when she was a little girl. And here, then we have Lauren's case requested by mom, Teresa. So, Lauren also passed it by her own hand. And this is an idea of how I was recording with the photo, with the vapor. And uh, as you will note, the photo will serve as a, a parameter, as a parameter for the locate, location for where they have to send uh, their data pack. This is Lauren, beautiful, by the way. This is the photo that mom sent for comparison. Here, a bit younger. But you see that the traces are just the same. Even younger. still young as a little girl. And uh, as a child, a little child. She expresses a, a special happiness. And uh, nearly as a baby, but it, it called my attention, the color of the hair. 
notes in that in the trans imagery, she, she has this somewhat red hair, which is similar to the photos that mom had. And now we can question, why the time trips that we are seeing now, all these, all, in all these cases? Is that for they are the undeniable proof to the family because the family don't have those photos, or it is for the other side to show the power of their technology, or the most possible? I think that they are teaching us something an unexpected that will be we will talk today. So, in my opinion, it is not for uh, the console of the family. It is not just a proof. It is for something still more important that we'll be talking today. Now, we return to the cases with, of this year. So, we still have Victoria also. She also passed it by her own hands, requested by Chrissy. She passed it at the age of uh, 16. And this is the beautiful girl that she uh, brought it to us. And even younger, look at this. Very, very, very similar traces. That is the photo that mother sent after recording was done. So that was the girls. Now we go to the suicide project boys. OK, so let's start with Cameron. Cameron is uh, Stefania's son, also passed by his own hands. And uh, this is how Cameron appeared. Note that there is uh, something like a hand uh, below the eye that I, I traced a contour just for, for you to note. Uh, and uh, I sent it to Lisa, Lisa sent it to Stefania and asked her, if that has any special meaning, if this hand over the below the eye had any special meaning. And Stefania said that week she was uh, ex exceptionally very sad and cried sometimes. And it seems in the trans image that Cameron was drying her tears, her tears. As a little boy, look at this image that appeared replacing uh, Cameron's photo. And here is the photo that Stefania supplied to compare. Logan's case, so, sorry, Logan's case requested by mom Brandy. He passed at the age of 17, also by his own hands. And this is astonishing quality. Look at these, and he doesn't use glasses anymore. Also, he appeared younger. These are uh, other one. Is still of Logan. And as a, as a little boy. That is the the photo that uh, brand is supplied for comparison. Samuel's case requested by mom Annie from Australia. He passed at the age of 17. Look, when you compare to the photos that mother sent later, I think it is surprising. It is just the same little boy, but he wasn't a little boy when he passed it, right? So that is surprising because these are scenes of his past. As a teenager, is still Samuel. Then we have a Reese's case, a son of Rhonda. He passed in Texas at the age of 17. And look at these younger. And still younger. Look at the smile, which is just the same. Then we'll go to Dante's case. 
Uh, his mother is Nilu Far, and he passed in Ontario, Canada at the age of 20. And it, see this, it was such a remarkable evidence because I sent it to, to Nilo Far, uh, this transimage at left, and then she sent me this photo of Dante when he was a little boy. And then I uh, sticked them together and you see it is just the same face. He, uh, him, he appears as a bit older and this is another comparison mom sent to me. Then we go to Georgia's case. She is the daughter of Maria Pia. She also um, passed by her own hands uh, in Italy. She left it to the little boys. And that is how uh, Georgia appeared. Then we have Gregory's case from Mother Janet. He passed at the age of 19 in England. He appeared younger. And this is very interesting because Mother sent you this photo of him playing. And then if we, we enlarge just that uh, uh, the tail of the, the face, you see that it is very similar. The nose, uh, the, 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 the look is just the same as of uh, Gregory. Then we have Louis case, mom face. He passed it in Tallahassee at the age of 20. And this is how he appeared a bit older. Here is the comparison. Keelan's case, mom Lien. Lien is also very sweet. He's from Australia, uh, passed at the age of 19. Look at this. I think it is so cute that he appeared with long hair, just as he used it to use when he was in this side. Then we have Chess Case, passed at the age of 19 in Wisconsin, requested by mom Mary. And this is how he appeared. Beautiful. And also a bit younger. Then we have Joel's case. It was, uh, uh, I think, astonishing. Uh, he was. Uh, this was requested by Mom Colinda. Uh, he passed at the age of twenty-two in Canada. Now look at these trans images. This is uh, showing him a little bit younger, but uh, it was a good comparison with the photo. He is looking straight to the camera. And this is the photo that mom sent for comparison. And then as a little boy, see the difference from the, the photo that was uh, with 22 and now, uh, sorry, 20. And then he appeared as a little boy, perhaps with uh, five or eight years old. And what I'm, I will call your attention is, is that all these apparitions in the past has a reason that we just discovered. This is Thomas case, mom Ruth, he passed at the age of 22. Look at the quality of this image. It also has the, the have, gives you the impression that you can touch it. Here too, This is the photo mom sent. Notes that sometimes he is smiling, sometimes he is not. This is another photo sent by Ruth. Then we have Levi's case. It was another uh, fascinating case uh, requested by mom Ruth Ann. 
uh, he passed in Alaska at the age of 24. And look at this. He appeared as a very little boy. And I think that this half image is absolutely very clear. That was the photo that mother sent later. And here, him as a teen. And in this special image, note that he appears in one single image, he appears in two different ages. He appears as younger at the left and a bit old in the, in the right. So that is the photo that I had. Note that it is very, very different. Now, look at this, uh, this little boy and as mom sent when he was a little boy. And here Levi's appears smiling, what is very surprising because uh, it is a complete change over the photo. Then we have this case, mom Allison from UK. He passed at the age of 26 also by his own hands. And he also appeared as a little boy. And this is the photo mom sent for comparison. And when he was uh, and in this other trans image, you see that he is older. And then uh, Allison sent this photo of Guy when he was um, a bit older. This is another Louis. Uh, this is Gina's son. Gina always participates. She is also my old patron. Uh, he is uh, 25 years old when he passed, also by his own hands. And uh, this is how he appeared. Look at this. The smile is different. The eyes is blue. And he was, let's say, bold when he passed and in the photo that I had, but he appeared with hair over his front. Then we have Kion's case, mom Neda. He passed in California for uh, at the age of 23. He appeared with, appeared with long hair, very beautiful. And as a boy. Luis Rodrigo is a Brazilian. It is a very rare that I recorded for Brazilians. Um, uh, he, his wife, Adriana, uh, from Sao Paulo, the same city that I live, um, sent this photo that we see uh, him at uh, close to the age of 38 with the glasses. And that, that is how he appeared without glasses. And in this trans image, he appeared in both in two different ages also. Observe that uh, uh, younger at left and a bit old, older at right. Then we have Rodney's case from Debbie. Uh, uh, Debbie is here with us today. I told her that she would see her son today. Here is Rodney. Uh, Rodney is uh, an incredible case. Look at the quality of this image. Look at that uh, he is so uh, concrete, that uh, so solid, that you can see the, the, the shadow under his nose, as if it is a 3D. And the, the photo that I had wasn't like this, of course. As she said, he she uh, notes that he had such a, a uh, why the smile now? Why the smile? This is that is what I uh, why I say Rodney's case was wonderful. Look at this image at the right. It is just him as he was younger, and also in this other one also. 
there's a denature maybe. Remember that he passed it at the age of 41, also by his own hands. Then we have Brett's case, requested by Sister Richelle. He passed it at the age of 49 in Texas. And that is how he appeared, much, much younger. And in this image, it is just curious because there are two images in one, uh, a little boy over and a man below. And that is the picture that uh, Richelle sent it to, to me for comparison. Chad's case, Mom Barbara. It was, um, I wasn't sure if these would work because the photo was of a bad quality and I didn't know if these would work for the other side. But incredibly, I think that the, the trans images are better than the photo. Yeah, look at that, he appears younger. Here, a bit older, but still younger than the photo. Richard's case passed at uh, the age of 77 in Pensacola, and it was a request, a request of Tashwana, his daughter. Look at how he appeared, uh, healthy, happy. And I think this is the last case. The Car Carlos Alberto uh, from Argentina. Uh, requested by uh, his uh, daughter-in-law, Ada. And look at this, two in one trans images, younger and more or less as an adult, but it's still much younger than when he passed. So that was all the cases that we recorded in this year. So it was really a lot of work, happily. And now my question is, what we learned with that, all these that I showed it to you. How can our spirit, spirit friends access the past? We talked about Tesla. When he was alive, uh, once he suffered an accident, it is well known, all this is, is at, at, at the internet. And uh, he, all of a sudden, for a fraction of a second, he declared that could, he could see the past, present, and future at the same time. So this is a very known, known uh, thought of Tesla. And since then, since this accident, he became very interested in the topic of time, to, to control time. Sorry. So, my question is, did the scientists from the station develop a technology to access consciousness? Remember what we're seeing up to now? Think with me. Let's imagine as per what it has been shown to us in the recordings that all our memories never disappear. So ITC phenomenon shows that all our memories follow with us. Physically, it is not an imagination. All our memories are solid enough to be caught by a camera. And this is something that it is a huge discovery that I, I'm sure that in some years, when science proves that uh, uh, survival is real, um, and that this phenomenon is real, they will also confirm uh, this new topic, which is absolutely amazing. Just for you to, to understand better, I made this composition uh, with my photo for you to understand better. So let us imagine that this is the timeline and uh, uh, at the right we have the past and the future, and then we have many ages. And uh, uh, then these are me in different ages. So the idea is that 
all these Sonias still exists, we would say in our consciousness, which is the same as the spirit, or we could say our mind or our consciousness, it is all the same. And then the idea is that all these will never disappear. It will uh, be uh, carried by us for our whole life. So, oh, oh, so, oh, not only, obviously, I just showed the photos because it was easier, but the idea is that all our memories, everything you have done, to whom you have met, uh, where you traveled, everything are ah, still in your consciousness and can be caught if they have the adequate equipment. That is, our memories are preserved. And this is something astonishing. And that is why I said that maybe they are not just taking the console to the families. I return it to the case of Levi. Remember, uh, remember he passed as a, a teenager and his consciousness is for, forever intact. He still have all those memories. So this is a new knowledge for mankind. Now, uh, uh, this was now uh, some uh, in ancient ancient cultures, but for now it is new. Uh, so there is another phenomenon that endorses that past is inextinguishable. It is near death experience. Let's see uh, how we the near death experience. I think everybody knows that. Uh, in the cases, if you read something about near-death experience, possibly you saw uh, statements of persons that have had the uh, near-death experience, and they uh, relate that they all of a sudden saw the whole life to pass over their eyes as if it was a movie. All of them say the same thing. All of them see the whole life passing uh, through their eyes, and then obviously these are cases that the person uh, recomposed and returned it to life, but they saw the holy life at a movie. If the past can be seen in near-death experience, it means that memories are stored in our mind. They don't vanish. So, the Akashic records may be real. That is what some uh, scientists are researching, such as Nassim Haremai. What is the Akasha? Akasha is a cosmic field in which all information and knowledge is interconnected and preserved. This is ancient future, something like 5,000 years. Uh, they knew this, that nothing is lost. Another scientist that is uh, researching about uh, Akasha is uh, Dr. Erwin Laszlo. Uh, he wrote many books about this topic. And he also believes that everything that we live are uh, still preserved in the universe. So universe are pure data, are all memories. It is uh, as if each one of us was, was a HD, of a computer where you are you go on putting the memories and uh, then you have the, the the file ready and then you can uh, take from one computer and to put in another which is from one body to the other and then you go with all your memories nothing is lost how now we come to another important top how itc communicators extract the images from the past from each one's consciousness. And also we could think, does pets, do pets have consciousness? Could they communicate through orator? Remember that orator, uh, as we can interpret it, maybe we discover later, what exactly it is, but by now for us, it is a machine, a device, a, a huge computer, quantum computer, something that we have no idea. Uh, so, yeah, uh, possibly 
the pets are still alive. Here is uh, Rodney's dog he brought recently. There are some other, uh, this is Louis' dogs. That look at the, 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 the dog also uh, become younger, not only us. Uh, this is Butter, he passed at the age of uh, 13, but he appeared over Louis' front as a puppy. Here is Tommy, Tommy's dog, also of, the, of this year. This is Keegan's dog as his memory. And this is Richard's dog. So what we learned, we not only that it only we, we not only survive, but we carry along all our history. If life and memories are inextinguishable, we the the suicides won't go to hell forever, as the Bible says, because we see that there are new opportunities all the time. So I think that the Bible is wrong. And also we learned that other species are, are able to communicate due to the sophisticated technology of our spirit friends. So this was what I had to, to share uh, with you today. I hope that uh, you have enjoyed it. And if there is any question, I would be pleased to to reply.